This is Campbell Biology 7th edition, Chapter 6, A Tour of the Cell. There's a link here for a video from the uh, Harvard Intro Bio class that was created for them. It's actually quite interesting uh, and fun to watch. There's two versions, one just with some fun techno music and it runs through an animation of the cell, and the other one uh, with the same kind of uh, animation, but it incorporates text of uh, an explanations, not really explanations, but text of the various parts of the cell. They tell you what you're looking at. It's a bit longer and probably more worthwhile to watch for all of you. Um, this is a very important idea, simply that structure equals or connects to function, uh, much like we saw with enzymes where its shape, its three-dimensional shape, tertiary or quaternary, uh, directs its function and what it's going to fit with. Uh, the same goes with all these various cellular uh, components. Uh, a lot of what we know about cells we know from looking at them under microscopes. We don't need to know the details of microscopes, there's all different kinds. Light microscopes, electron microscopes, phase contrast microscopes that you see down here, um, fluorescent microscopes to see fluorescent dyes and so on. Uh, electron microscopes are the ones, whether it's transmission or scanning, that show you these very cool pictures. The uh, organism has to be dead to see that picture. And in fact, that's actually a career that's in demand. Someone who's trained to be an electron microscope technician, um, they train for a couple of years and then they do that for all the scientists. Most scientists don't know how to do that. Here you see another type of picture. This is from a train, uh, transmission electron microscope. Not important that you know the differences, of course, here. Uh, we can see or, or separate the parts of these cells, um, sort of bluntly, if you like, through self-fractionation. Uh, there's one picture here and there's another one later shown for you. But you take a, a sample of your cells and you blind, uh, blend them all up in a blender, to, you homogenate them to get all the pieces kind of broken out, and then you spin it down in a centrifuge at uh, faster and faster, faster speeds. Uh, initially, the most dense pellets go to the most dense things go to the bottom. We call it the pellet, and above it we have the supernatant. That's the fluid and anything floating in it. And these are the nuclei and various other large uh, structures. So if you want the nuclei, you could take that. Otherwise, you remove it. You spin it again. Uh, for longer and at a faster speed. And here we have mitochondria and chloroplasts down at the bottom. We can remove those, use them, or just trash them. Then we get into smaller pieces, uh, microsomes and various other uh, uh, tiny pieces of plasma membrane and so on. And then finally you do it, you can get ribosomes, the smallest of all the organelles. Um, and so here you see that process, once again, the same thing. And of course, the blender. Two types of cells, prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Uh, they share a lot of features, which includes a plasma membrane. They both have cytosol. This is the fluid that everything is floating in. Now, you all learned probably the word cytoplasm, which means the cytosol and all the organelles and things that are floating in it. We call that cytoplasm. But the fluid itself is cytosol. Uh, they both have chromosomes, one linear, one circular, and they both have ribosomes. Now, prokaryotic cells do not have a nucleus, but they do have DNA in a region called the nucleoid. It's not wrapped in a membrane, of course, like eukaryotic cells, but they do have DNA, and that DNA is circular. Here you see an image, a picture of uh, a prokaryotic cell, both the real thing and a cartoon. It's pretty typical of um, prokaryotic cells like this bacterium to have um, uh, locomotion-type structures, such as flagella or cilia. Cilia can be used both for identification, for adhering to other structures or surfaces, as well as for locomotion. Um, and here you also see uh, they have the nucleoid region. It's just the, the region where all the DNA is. And a lot of them have cell walls. We talked about gram staining, gram positive, gram negative bacteria, and how the different uh, staining patterns occur because of differences in cell wall structure due to peptidoglycan. Yeah, that really long, complicated word. Uh, eukaryotic cells are larger, and they are wrapped in uh, the nucleus is wrapped in a membrane. And as you know, cells are very small, and this is intentionally so, because as you get bigger, it gets harder and harder to move things in and out of the cell. A smaller cell has a higher surface to volume ratio, and we'll investigate this as part of our cell size lab, and a higher surface area to volume ratio helps move nutrients in and wastes out. And you can see some of that in this diagram down here. The plasma membrane is a selective barrier. We see that here. The yellow portions are the fatty acid tails that are nonpolar and thus hydrophobic. This grayish region is the glycerol uh, with a phosphate on it, which makes it polar and hydrophilic, and thus why it's on the outside near the water. These other purple structures are membrane proteins, and the green is a glycoprotein used for identification and signaling. Here we have the inside of the cell and the outside of the cell. 
Uh, and this just uh, prevents certain things from getting in and allows other things to come in. Now, eukaryotic cells have uh, membrane-bound organelles inside, and plant and animal cells have mostly the same organelles. Here you see an animal cell, and we'll go through all these different organelles, but you want to be able to identify them on a picture. And here we have a plant cell. The three main differences, of course, that you'll notice are chloroplasts. Inside the chloroplast, we have these stacks of green pancakes, I like to call them, which uh, each little pancake is a thylakoid, and all one stack here is a granum, or grana, plural. They also have a central vacuole here, which stores nutrients and water. Um, and that vacuole is actually what keeps the cell turgid or um, uh, strong and standing up. And when the plant doesn't have enough water, this is empty and the plant wilts. And then you'll also notice the cell wall, of course. We will stop on this point and go to part two.